Now I would like to show you one more experiment concerned with waterproof and wetting. I would like to get some nitrogen which has been cooled and pushed together. Right. I'm going to pour into this goblet with a protecting vacuum liquid air, namely liquid nitrogen. You'll see it boiling all the time. And uh, I want a short piece of that if I can. All right. We'll leave that there and the same supply. I would like to put this rubber tube in. Anybody want to try it? Huh? All right. Here is some more. Take it. Now, by this time, it's well frozen, and so I will take this out here. There. I will give Mr. Coates that in exchange for a good hammer, and we will see what the rubber tube is like. Ready? <laughs> now, don't put your finger in liquid nitrogen unless you do it very, very quickly. Now here is liquid nitrogen again. You know, it's a nice white liquid. I'm going to put my finger in because I don't, because I know what I'm doing. Don't do this. This is not a thing to imitate. Is that right, Sir George? He said yes. <laughs> Sir George is the head of the whole Royal Institution and he and I confer about what's good for people and not. <laughs> Watch that. Look what happens. Now, why do they run along? Because this thing is liquid air, nitrogen proof, for a different reason. It bubbles away, boiling, and coasts like a hovercraft on a piece, on a layer of nitrogen gas. We'll do that again for you people. Any more left? Right. No, no, I want both lots. We'll pour it along the floor here. What's the evidence from that? There are two pieces of evidence, very interesting. First, nitrogen molecules attract each other. If they didn't attract, they couldn't make that liquid. They couldn't stick together. Second, nitrogen molecules repel each other when very close. Because if they didn't repel, the liquid would have collapsed and disappeared like that suddenly. So we know they attract, and we know when very close they repel. And that's how we get evidence about things which are much too small to see.